Hello and welcome to a double-headed review of Limbo and Inside, two games that were developed by the small indie studio Play Dead. Based in Copenhagen, Denmark, Play Dead was founded by Arndt Jensen and Dino Patti in 2006. But as of 2016, the two have gone their separate ways with the former Play Dead CEO Patti creating a new studio called Jumpship and working on a title called Somerville. Jensen remains at Play Dead and is also working on a new title that was teased in 2017 which will be the studio's third game. But we're here to take a look at Play Dead's first two games, so without further delay, let's travel to Limbo. Released in 2010 and now available on nearly every platform, Limbo's charm lies with its simplicity, telling a lonely tale of a boy's desperate search through a dark and dangerous forest. Using a custom game engine, Limbo's grayscale imagery is as minimal as it is eerie. The dim lighting emulates a flickering candle or a drowsy person's heavy eyelid. Mysterious and without any traditional music so to speak, you'll likely only hear the droning and swelling background noises or the echoes of your own footsteps. In contrast to the cute silhouette of the young boy, the gory and brutal deaths will make you feel anything but safe. The atmosphere was arguably its strongest selling point, where the sound of a high-pitched spinning saw blade or a worm wriggling can give you pause for a moment. As you wander through the dark woods, you'll encounter various enemies including a giant spider. Just like in real life, there's nothing more terrifying than evading and trying to kill a giant spider. In this mysterious landscape, you can run, jump, climb ropes, and grab onto ledges. Solve puzzles by pushing or pulling objects, and interact with switches and levers to operate machines. The controls are very simple, but the developers make pretty good use of the limitations they have placed upon themselves. The 2D puzzle platformer integrates some creative puzzles through these seemingly simple interactions. Designed without the tutorial, a couple things may not be intuitive, but that was intentional so that players would have to learn the mechanics on their own. The level designs are well thought out, and only the most observant players will find the 11 collectible eggs hidden throughout the forest. As Play Dead's first title, Limbo makes a solid showing worth playing. If you have around 3 hours to spare, it's a fun and easy game to pick up and play through in one or two sittings. But wait until the end of the next review to make a choice. Building on the success of Limbo, Play Dead's second title, Inside, was released in 2016. Using the Unity game engine, you'll explore the largely monochromatic world in a 2.5D environment. Starting out very similarly to Limbo, you'll control a boy in a forest once again. Dodge and outrun your pursuers by running, jumping, climbing, and grabbing ledges. They've also incorporated a stealth mechanic that uses lighting and shadows effectively. In addition to pushing and pulling objects, you can now also lift and throw them, adding more variation to the gameplay. Water levels allow the players to swim, further adding more depth to the game's mechanics. Once again, only the most discerning eyes will be able to locate the collectible orbs hidden in the great but also improved level designs. The physics, movements, and even death animations are more realistic, but still retain a fair bit of goriness and brutality that can be quite graphic in nature. The art style and graphics are much more crisp and is a marked improvement over their first title. The visuals are very stylish and the sparse use of colors that helped highlight certain objects on screen was a nice contrast to the mostly darker background. From your start in the forest to the cool farms you passed through early on, there's much more substance and striking images in this world. As you navigate through the dystopian nightmare, take awe in the industrial wasteland and take pity on the lifeless workers in the corporate hellscape. The dynamic visual perspectives within the levels give it a grander scale, and the camera work is superb as it pans in and out to show detail and scope. Audio also played a larger role, as some puzzles are directly set to visual oral cues. The audio quality of the music was very high, Eerie droning and somber tones were effective at conveying the cruelties of the world. The sound effects were very good, from the tapping of your feet to the loud crashes as you smash through walls and splash through water. The superb sound design provided great auditory feedback for all your actions. Just as grotesque at some parts, Inside presents a much darker undertone despite having more color than Limbo. Overall, Inside tells a stronger narrative through its puzzle platforming. If you have around 4 hours, Inside is a game I highly recommend. Both games offer a good experience, but you can tell they've learned a lot from their first title. Partly leading to the better experience was that Inside was a little bit longer, allowing for a more interesting story to be told. 
When a game offers seemingly so little in terms of visuals and gameplay mechanics, you're forced to scrutinize what they do offer, and what they offer was very well put together. Ultimately, Inside was a more refined experience visually and thematically, providing a much more interesting narrative, better sound design, better storytelling, and it left much more room for interpretation. Mechanically, it provided more gameplay variation, leading to more creative puzzles. And traversing the 2.5D environment felt better than the straight two-dimensional constraints of Limbo. So if I were to only recommend one, I would definitely choose Inside. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your experience was playing either of these two games. And what are you hoping to see in Play Dead's third title? Until next time, see ya.